We're here to talk about ADHD today. Um, we are a group of folks who have ADHD. Um, I want to point out, just to set some context, we're um, obviously not experts in ADHD. We are people who've lived our own experiences. Everybody's experiences with it are different, and that can depend on even things like, you know, coexisting conditions that you have. And so um, we're just speaking for ourselves and our own experiences. What we say may not apply to you as an individual. Um, and uh, just to get started, if you're comfortable doing it, um, raise your hand if you have ADHD or think you do or know someone who does. All right, a lot of, a lot of folks. I think that um, probably more people know someone who does than think they do as well. Um, yeah, this is unrehearsed. Um, we're just talking about our experiences. Um, we're going to start off with some intros, but before we do that, I want to mention somebody who's not here today, um, Waleed Shari, who's the person who um, put this all together, actually, and then unfortunately he wasn't able to make it here. So uh, big, big shout out to Waleed. Um, I'm sure he is here in spirit, um, even though he couldn't make it. Um, so we're going to start off with some intros. Um, I'll just go really quick. Um, I'm Rich Burrows. I work at Loft Labs. Um, I'm uh, middle-aged and uh, was diagnosed about a year ago, year and a half ago, I think it was. Um, Farah? Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Farah Campbell, uh, and I am the head of the Modern Applications community at AWS. I uh, live in Portland, Oregon, have two boys, and I was diagnosed when I was a teenager. So, hello everyone. My name is Hebala Ayuti. Um, um, I'm working for Microsoft, a software engineer and AKS team. Um, I am a mom for two daughters, um, live in California, um, originally from Egypt. And what else? Yeah, um, I have been diagnosed <laughs> with ADHD uh, almost one and a half years ago. Hi, my name is Bart Farrell. I'm a freelance consultant working uh, with the data on Kubernetes community. And I'm from California, but I currently live in Spain. I've been living there for the last 11 years with my amazing partner, Maite, I love you. Um, and I got diagnosed uh, with ADHD this year. So I guess I'm kind of the new kid on the block. Yeah. Great. Um, so I wanted to start off by asking everybody um, how you learned that you have ADHD. Well, school assignments. I wasn't completing my school assignments, and uh, I actually I would complete them. I just wouldn't turn them in, so it was a done deal for me. Um, and uh, my mom decided that we should probably see somebody because she didn't understand why I was such a good student, but would get, you know, bad grades on like my homework and things, uh, but I would ace my tests. <laughs> so none of it made sense. Uh, and um, remember when I got diagnosed, I like, I didn't really want to have that because then I kind of felt like something was weird with me and I expected like ADHD to be like this hyper kid running around everywhere that, you know, can't sit down or things. Um, but yeah, that's, I was diagnosed and um, it's because I wasn't turning in, well, turning in completed assignments. <laughs> um, I was diagnosed a little bit late and actually uh, I started to feel like what's going on when I started to, you know, like my journey with, you know, like with Kubernetes and everything. I loved it so much and I felt like, okay, I, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I tried to learn, I tried to read books, uh, you know, like read lots of books, never finish the book, <laughs> uh, you know, like listening to any, you know, like anything. It's like, okay, no, I cannot complete, but I feel, you know, like I wanted to do this, so what's wrong? I struggled a lot, uh, a lot. Um, so yeah, I started to, you know, like get depressed, get lots of, like lots of anxiety. <laughs> and I feel like, yo, I'm a failure, you know, like I cannot do it. Uh, I cannot learn anything new and, you know, like, blah, 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 all this stuff. I, I know, you know, like, we can't relate. So, yeah, I started to just seek help. 
and my psychiatry, uh, my psychiatrist, she was great. She spent a lot of time until it's like, hey, <laughs> you know, let's do this. <laughs> let's do this test. And uh, yeah, I got an ADHD. So yes, I'm not, you know, like, uh, you know, like dancing, you know, like, or, you know, like or moving a, a lot, but I'm, I'm so distracted. So I cannot concentrate for more than, you know, like specific time. All right. Um, my ADHD story actually has a lot to do with this particular community. And I had always, I've always been a very active person, very energetic, very passionate, and also like have, a, have the tendency to get distracted, difficulty focusing, really like starting things, have certain challenges, maintaining or finishing them. And, but what it really got sparked realizing about adults with ADHD was listening to a podcast where, does anybody know who Redbeard is? Okay. So I was listening to a podcast where Redbeard was interviewed and I listen to podcasts while I go running so that I get different pieces of information and I generally tune out the technical stuff. I don't have a technical background, but when Redbeard started talking about his experience being diagnosed as an adult with ADHD, a lot of his experience resonated with things that I had been going through. And in addition to that, I saw a tweet from Rich yesterday or a comment about uh, the pandemic kind of opening up a lot of folks um, to realizing that, you know, maybe some other things are going on. And that helped me get on the path towards uh, diagnosis. Then I had the whole doubt about doing it in Spain because ADHD is dealt with differently in Spain and it's uh, ADHD in adults is not as uh, dealt with as it is in the United States. So but while I was going through it, I decided that I, I did want to go through it and with the support uh, from, from my, uh, my partner, um, I, I went through the process and while going, going through it, when all the things they were asking me, it was quite clear that I was going to pass with flying colors, get a 10 out of 10. Um, and so, yeah, so since then, that's, like I said, that's kind of been my experience. It's been, it's an ongoing process, um, but I'm really grateful to, to this community to giving me a space where I can explore that and share that and get support for it. That's great. Thank you all. Um, my story, um, I was, uh, um, I helped uh, organize the DevOps Days conference in Portland, and um, a friend of mine, actually someone I knew, came in and did a talk, Aaron Aldrich, and the talk was about uh, their experience with mental illness, and I knew it was going to be about that, but I didn't know they were going to be talking about ADHD, and I was just blown away because... Um, I had never really understood it, and I was watching this talk and almost had tears in my eyes because they were just describing my experience completely. And so in typical ADHD fashion, um, I uh, didn't uh, get diagnosed for like a year and a half. <laughs> I put it off. Um, but I was struggling so much in the pandemic that I finally did, and um, it's helped me a lot. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about... Um, what um, some of the ways are that you kind of try to deal with your ADHD symptoms in your life? Setting lots of reminders. Uh, I have all my bills set on electronic because again, for me, if I like wrote the check, then like to me it's done and I won't remember to, to send it. <laughs> um, I, for big projects or just for tasks that aren't necessarily ex exciting to me, like when I just cannot force myself to do that, I actually have accountability partners that I'll like actually text and, you know, we'll set up time to actually work together because I know I need to get this project done. Uh, I've been waiting for two weeks. It's still sitting there, uh, you know, and uh, or maybe some more like that strategic where you actually have to like sit and think about things. So it's just actually having somebody there that knows what I'm trying to accomplish. That's also working too, but then you can also like engage with a little bit so that I don't get super bored. Like when I'm doing that, I found that that's been really, really helpful um, for me. Um, medication definitely helps me. I went off medication for a bit just because I felt like there was such a stigma tied to it. And even like, I remember like picking up my prescriptions. Sometimes I felt like I was being judged. And so I just didn't want to do that anymore. Um, but then as my career grew and responsibilities grew, um, I, I was, yeah, when I was failing, I uh, decided to go back on medication and, you know, that actually really, really helped me. But really that accountability partners and having friends that I can reach out to when I, when I'm struggling to actually get something done, even though like I want to do it and I'll wake up every day with a good intention to do it. Uh, you know, setting that time with somebody like on a Friday or, you know, sometimes it's on Saturday when I need to catch my friends to actually accomplish that work has been really, really helpful. 
Well, it's, um, I cannot say that, you know, like I, um, I know that, like, what should they do uh, to, you know, like to, to be like very effective, but at least um, I can share with you like what I've, you know, like I've done so far. So, um, because I, you know, like I intend to have lots of commitments without, you know, like it's like over commitments all the time. So before, you know, like it's like, um, I, I got this uh, this habit now. If anyone asked me about any project or, you know, like contributing to anything, it's like, hey, yeah, I will, you know, like, you know, like I will uh, reply to you in, you know, like a couple of, you know, like next day or maybe, you know, like after a few hours. And uh, I have, I have like a, a small whiteboard on my uh, desk that, you know, like writing everything uh, because I will forget. <laughs> Uh, so, and you know, like it's like, okay, do I have any place? Do, do I have any any time to do this or not? So I'm trying to just enforce me to enforce myself to, you know, like it's like think, think before commit um, to anything. Uh, the second, actually, I, I just told you about that. The whiteboard is my friend now. It's it's my lovely friend. So I'm trying to add like to do list every every day morning. What? you know, like maybe hundred thing, <laughs> you know, like I know that, you know, like I'm not, I'm not be able to finish even, you know, like percent of them, but it's like, take, you know, like taking them from my mind, putting them in front of me. It's just a relaxation, you know, like, because it's like, I feel like my mind is, you know, like running all the time. I can, you know, like, it's like, I cannot concentrate on only one thing. So I need to just, you know, like uh, take, take all this information from here, put it in, in, in other place. So it's like a, uh, you know, like someone, <laughs> something, you know, like shared this with me. And uh, if, if there is any, something that, you know, like I need to accomplish, uh, I need, I need, I need a company, you know, like someone to, to accompany me to, to have this done. Uh, so sometime the, <laughs> my husband, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you, Hamid. <laughs> so he's like, okay, uh, I need, I need someone, you know, like I need to, you know, like, um, Tell you what I understood, uh, I understand so far. So you can ask me questions, and these questions, you know, like I will come back and you know, like start to, you know, like ah, oh, <laughs> I forgot, you know, like to read this part, or you know, like I just skipped this chapter, or so. For example, if I wanted to read a book, I cannot, you know, like uh, I cannot read the book. So it's like okay, I will pick some chapters, I will go through them, I will just highlight them with a marker or anything, just to be focused. It's like I need to have a pen all the time with me. Uh, so, and you know, like I would have this conversation with my husband uh, because he's a software engineer as well. Uh, so it's like, okay, you know, you don't know this part. So it's like, yeah, this is my task. I will go and, you know, like have this back. Uh, what else? The medication uh, is like a life change for me. And um, the important thing is accepting, accepting what I have. It's like, I'm not a failure. I'm, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not a bad person. I'm not, you know, I, I can I can do this. I, I, I can do it, but just in a different way. So I'm trying to figure out with myself <laughs> how to do it just in a different way. I can agree with things that were said by both of them. In, in my case, um, well, I think with all this too, something that comes up a lot for me is, you know, ADHD. I turn that into ADH me the sense that it's my experience and so I can only really speak to that. While there are things that are in common, it's always a mixture and, and depending on you know when, when it starts in your life and, and how you approach it, the support systems that you have in place. But like with, with what both of them mentioned, having using reminders, I'll put stuff in my calendar, I use Evernote, I start out the day writing, like have a, probably about 500 things. Has anybody actually ever successfully used the Eisenhower Quadrant of urgent, important, and stuff like that? That should be erased. I mean, it's put out there like, yeah, you just separate an urge and important and then everything takes care of itself, right? Um, and so I struggle, with, I struggle with that, about knowing about what I need to do first, like with what Farah said, doing the things that I like the most, and then the rest just kind of, you know, put them off or hope they disappear, which doesn't happen. Uh, the IRS hits you up for taxes. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that, that's been part of it, um, but it is helpful. And I, it's funny is that I never really considered myself to be someone who liked to make lists, but I make a lot of lists. And one of the things that has helped me is that I do have a sort of personal assistant um, who I work with on other projects. 
And he said, one of these days I'm going to wake up inside of a list <laughs> because of all the lists that I make. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing that's important for me is, uh, is trying to eat healthy. And, and so making sure that, you know, having like healthy snacks during the day and stuff like that, brain food, not drinking too much coffee, um, drinking enough water, exercise is a really important thing for me too, to like have that time, um, to sort of calm myself down and, um, other things like something that, that Heva mentioned that that's really challenging about, uh, ADHD. And not, and once again, as, as Rich said in the beginning, we're not, you know, uh, medical professionals, but something that's talked about a lot in ADHD is what's called uh, rejection sensitivity dysphoria. And it's not necessarily a specific clinical term, but it's a mixture of different things that many people have ADHD say is the, the hardest part about it. That low sense of self-worth, not just a reaction to being rejected, but the fear of being rejected, the expectation and anticipation that's going to happen. And then a sort of what can happen about emotional dysregulation um, if that happens or even before it happens. So the stress that you go through, jumping to the worst case scenario, assuming that things are going to go well, and in general feeling like a failure. And that's really hard. Um, and so to build that up, you have to find different ways to be kind to yourself. Because, and, and it's challenging, and there's no magic solution to that. So once again, I, I really want to tell everybody out there who has ADHD or is, or is helping someone who does, that it's trial and error. It's not going to be a straight shot. Um, medication has also been part of my process, and that's still an ongoing thing of you know figuring out what's the best mixture and 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 how to make that right. Um, I also, when I got diagnosed, should have asked more questions about that. So I once again I encourage anybody when they're starting this process, ask all your questions and and ask them twice if you're not sure or make a list. Um, but I would say those are the things that that definitely help me. Also, in, 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 it's up to everybody, and I, I don't want to jump ahead too far ahead to next questions, but another thing that has helped me in certain situations is telling people that I have ADHD so that they understand my, like, certain things about my way of working. I never wanted to try to sound like it's an excuse, and so sometimes I'll maybe even shy away from it when I should say it, um, but I, I more and more try to figure out when it's appropriate to provide context. Um, so I would say those are generally the things that, um, that I've been doing. And yeah, and then other things as well too, like um, I'm also very impulsive. So I always keep like a guitar or ukulele like close to where I am, where I'm working. So if I want to take a quick break, I can do that. Time blindness is another thing that's talked about with ADHD. And so like with what, uh, what the others were saying as well, sometimes thinking that, oh, it's only been five minutes. No, it's been two hours uh, or, or the opposite. So like I said, these are things that's just anticipating that and then building that into your, to your routines. I've always been someone who's very anti-routine, so it's like I have to sort of, you know, it's like I know that if I set up a routine, my other, my ADHD self will come in and sabotage and destroy it, because I'm a bit of an anarchist as well. Um, so yeah, these are the things that, um, that I'm still working on, but it's been, I'm seeing positive changes, and that's really, that's really promising, because I know that I'm just getting started with this. I'm 37 years old, so it took a while to get here, um, but excited about the progress that I've been making, and also interacting with folks like, the wonderful people we have here on stage, and Waleed, we love you. Great. Um, I'd add that um, I do think the structure is important, like having reminders and things like that can be really helpful, but keep in mind that um, you might get bored with those things. So uh, one of the things I've learned about ADHD is that interest is very important. If, if something is novel and interesting to you, you're less likely to struggle with it. Um, and so um, I, I work with a coach and, um, you know, I was talking to her about, oh, I couldn't, you know, keep up with my to-do app and I just wasn't opening it anymore. And, and she said, hey, maybe you need to just try a new to-do app every three months, you know, and, and not beat yourself up for the fact that, you know, this one didn't work for you forever, you know, instead of considering it a failure, you know, just recognize that this is how your brain is and maybe you need to do something else. Um, and yeah, medication, I think, is a really personal thing. Um, I'm, I'm taking Ritalin. Um, it does help me, but, um, you know, everybody has their kind of own journey, and sometimes it is really even a struggle to kind of figure out which of the medications is the right one for you, if, if any of them are. Um, we want to save some time for Q&A, so I think we've just got time for um, one more question here. I want to ask folks... Um, uh, in the context of the Kubernetes community itself, like what your experience has been like, if there are things that you found really great, you know, about having ADHD in this community or things that have been hard. 
I would say the things that are hard is when you're meeting people uh, and, you know, having conversations, like I get distracted really easily. And so like sometimes I like won't look direct at the person or sometimes I'll start thinking or I'll be talking through something, but then somebody walked by and now I forgot totally what I was going to say. And then I you know, have to pause and try to remember where I'm at. Or sometimes I'll be telling a story and then start like on some other tangent and then trying to figure out how to get back or what I was really even trying to say. Uh, and so I think those are like the harder things that, you know, I've, I'm newer to the, the Kubernetes community. And so just trying to make sure that like I'm like, I'm, like looking and I'm paying attention and I'm like actively listening. And like I have to practice that and like tell myself, like be an active listener, you know, like try to look at somebody in the eye and not keep, you know, looking away the whole time. Um, or even like, even like, you know, when you're at the booth and having those conversations, you know, like I have to really focus hard because like everything that's going on around me, I'm constantly, you know, trying to like, I want to pay attention. I'm like, look, squirrel, you know? Um, so I think for like the harder part, and I, I think the good part is obviously like things like today, you know, that we have this safe, sp this safe space, you know, to kind of talk about it and to have shared experiences so you don't feel so alone. Uh, like, it's not just me. I'm not lazy because I can't get up and do this thing that I didn't want to do. And like, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of lists and I've tried really hard to organize my life and I do have to change how I'm doing it because I do get bored with what, however, I get bored really easily and I need to move on to something else. So I think like, yeah, the hard part is making sure that I'm, you know, participating and that I'm not looking like I'm not trying to participate. And the good things are that I really think that, this, you know, like we have this safe space, a safe space to, to, to share and learn with one another. Well, <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm, I, may, I, I may be like, um, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm I don't want it to you know, like, like to be like a phony person, but you know, like it's like I'm really happy these, you know, like the last at least the last two years. Not only because you know, like I I knew what was going on since I was a teenager, and why I'm you know like studying so hard, but you know, like I just forgot <laughs> in the exam or something like that. Um, but okay, so the, this community they validated me, so it's like. I always have this fear of the rejection. It's like, you know, like people will not, uh, you know, like they, they don't want it to talk to me or, you know, like maybe, you know, like lots of excuses. Oh, the accent is not clear. Um, you know, like maybe because, you know, like I'm different, whatever. It's like a lot of things on my head. It's like, you know, like they will reject me. They will reject me. But actually what happened when I started to, you know, like to uh, contribute and start to just, you know, like get started, they were welcoming, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like lots of people just reach out to me and, you know, like in private, uh, private messages or whatever. It's like, hey, they wanted to speak, you know, like they want to talk. Let's have, let's have a conversation. You know, like people, you know, like, uh, especially in Twitter, it's, it's like I have friends, finally, because, you know, like it's for my whole life, it's, it has been struggling so much because, you know, like I'm, someday I will be very active. Someday I will, you know, I, I don't want it to do anything because I'm just bored and I cannot continue anything. I, can, I cannot do it. I cannot do anything in just this routine, you know, like it's like every day I will wake up, I will do it. It's, it's very hard for me. Uh, the second thing that helped me a lot um, is having, you know, like, um, you know, like variety of work. So. I can, you know, <laughs> so I have, I have BRs in, you know, like seg, uh, seg testing, but you know, like, oh, uh, I can work in seg release now. Oh yeah, it's exciting. You know, like I can have something here. I can review uh, another, another PR, or, you know, like I can open an issue in another seg. So I feel like I'm, I'm moving while I'm sitting down <laughs> doing, doing code. So, because, you know, like coding is so hard to just, you know, like focus for some time to, to have it done. So this variety is it's it's really helpful um so yeah <laughs> i really like what i'm doing right now yeah i would echo that that you know because sometimes there can be a tendency to talk too much about the positive things that can come along with adhd and ignore the negative ones but some of the positive ones i completely agree with have of like for me being part of this ecosystem is being able to plug so many different things about my life whether it's uh speaking spanish having lived in different countries working in working in events video production all these different things at the same time with what she said 
I suffered a lot when I got started um, because of imposter syndrome, because I don't have a technical background and thinking like someone is going to call me out and tear me to pieces. And it was really, really stressful. And then getting to the point that would someone ask a very technical question, I would say, honestly, uh, I don't think I'm the best person to answer that, but I can definitely find you someone who can. And people say, oh, great. So I get to meet somebody else, you know, and, and realizing the value that I can provide in networking and having um, uh, resources, depending on what people might need, that that adds value. And so I, I really think that I feel extremely lucky because um, I told my, my wife this when I first got started out that for me, getting into this space is kind of like uh, getting into Neverland, as if like it was an alternative universe that I wasn't aware that uh, even existed. And like I said, being able to to use those different things, whereas someone who doesn't have ADHD might just want to focus on one thing. I'm someone who likes to jump around. What I would say though, and this is also what Heba said, um, and, and Farah mentioned too, is in terms of working with people that have ADHD is that because of the fear of rejection, a lot of times ADHD folks will, some, some will go out of their way to be people pleasers and will have a real hard time saying no to things if they're offered. And we'll end up with Heba said about overcommitment. And so before saying yes, or that you can always have a nice no, is that before I say yes to something, I really need to check all the existing things that I have going on so that I don't spread myself too thin and then get really angry at myself and beat myself up for not being able to do things that it's literally impossible to get to. Um, and then having to get out of something when I've already committed to it. So those are things that I would um, say to keep in mind. Um, but most of all, I just, and, and also as well too, going back to being welcomed in this space, I, we don't have enough time to give shout outs. One of the first people that I interacted with is with us right here is Chris Short. And shout out to Matt Broberg as well, all the folks in the, in the Contrabex um, group. And I got into that because of Divya, because of Rin, because of Savitha, because of a lot of wonderful people that knew my background experience and still encouraged me to get in because I thought, I'm not going to be able to do anything here. I have a religious studies degree and I've never written a line of code in my life. But I have tons of stuff to do here and I'm super grateful for that. And I feel extremely loved and supported. And for me, it's just a privilege to try to give that back and really pay it forward. That's an, an expression I didn't know before. Getting into this space is the idea of paying it forward. And I think we all have something to give, whatever it happens to be. And I just really like being in an environment where those kind of things are happening and those experiences are being built. Awesome. Thank you all. I'd, I'd just add really quickly again the the importance of interest. And, you know, I, I very much echo what Hebo had to say, you know, when I came to work at my current job, I talked to my boss about this, our CEO, Lucas, and I mentioned that, um, you know, I, uh, I struggle sometimes and that boredom was really bad. And his response was, well, we've got a lot of different things you can do, so um, you shouldn't get bored. But um, it's, been, it's been really good to have that kind of out in the open. Um, we are going to, I think we're just going to have time for some quick questions, but before we do that, I just wanted to mention that we really are just hoping to kind of start a conversation with people here. Um, this isn't, you know, meant to uh, uh, be the end of it. Um, there is the burnout channel in the CNCF Slack, and some folks have talked about um, these kind of issues there some, uh, I understand. Um, there's a couple other other things that you might check out here too, but you know we we weren't sure. Oh, we mistyped burnout, didn't we? <laughs> we have uh, we have ADHD, by the way, uh, but uh, but we um, you know we talked about potentially you know advocating for a new channel in the Slack or something like that, and we weren't sure if people even want that. So we kind of want to kick this back to the community and and you know maybe we can start some conversations about whether this is worth you know pursuing more. Um, I think we have time for just one or two questions. Oh, there's a lot of hands. Oh my gosh. What we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so you, are you going to bring the mic around or, um, how about there? And, um, speakers, what, um, I guess when we hear the questions, maybe just give me a little wave if you're super excited about answering that one. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, okay, so I guess, well, has meditation ever entered your like mind in terms of ways to, it's not a magic silver bullet by any means, but if it's something that you've ever uh, tried extensively or you tried it once and then like just gave up or one of those things. 
Uh, so the question is meditation. Okay, let me, I'm just going to say one thing real quick, which is that I've done it at times, but it, like everything, I have trouble keeping the routine up, right? And I literally just forget to do it. Uh, Bart? Okay. I'll give the 30 second answer. I start every day with like an affirmation where I have a bunch of different things written down and then I take deep breaths in between and it lasts about five minutes. And so like all the different things that I want to remind myself about, whether it's about self-worth, whether it's about organizing myself, whether it's about all those different things, so that I start the day with like an, at an equal, like we can say playing field or um, with the same sort of uh, focus. And that's helpful. And, but like I said, that's just my case. Yeah, other times I've tried like mindfulness things and stuff like that. I do listen to ADHD concentration music stuff that's on YouTube and that's helpful as like background music because if not, I love music and I'll just jump around from song to song and then that becomes really distracting. So that's my case. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, uh, having uh, music in the background helps a lot. Um, in the morning, um, uh, okay, so in, 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 my, in my phone, I have a lot, a lot of reminders, a lot of reminders. It's like reminding me to take the medicine, remind, uh, remind, another reminder for take a break, another reminder for uh, drink a coffee, <laughs> how many times I, I drink coffee. Uh, I have meetings, uh, you know, like re another reminder, my, uh, you know, like in my phone or, you know, like my Apple Watch. And again, accept yourself. This is really important. Accept yourself. Accept that I will try, I will fail. I will try again, oh, I, you know, like, it, it happened this time, it's okay, and, you know, like, start, to, you know, like, start again, start again, all the time. So I meditate, it's, it's taken me a long time to get there, I can get to, you know, 10 minutes before I think my mind starts to, to wander. Uh, I used to wonder, like, why I couldn't get further, but, like, even getting to 10 minutes uh, was a, a big deal for me. I also practice yoga in nidra at, in the evening, which is kind of like this talk down of your body, trying to relax myself, uh, along with, like, I think music is very meditative for me. Um, so, yeah, I definitely, I've gotten to 10, 15 minutes, and that's about as far as I can get. <laughs> All right. I, I'm sorry. I don't think we're going to have time for another question. We've got one minute left. Did we have ADHD and like to talk? Um, but I uh, really want to thank everyone for coming. This is such a great turnout, and um, we're really excited that so many folks wanted to talk about this. Um, like I said, um, let's, let's please keep the conversation going, and um, thank you all. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your KubeCon. <laughs>